is Guy, and this is The Hidden Agenda. It is the world's first effects pedal for your mouse and keyboard. And if you don't know what an effects pedal is, they're generally used by musicians to change the tone of their instruments while they're performing. So most pedals process an audio signal from something like an electric guitar or bass, but mine processes a data stream from a USB device. You just plug your USB mouse or keyboard into the jack here, and then you would plug this other side into your computer, that's a USB-C port. And at first, your device will behave totally normally. As far as your computer is concerned, it's just a normal mouse or keyboard. But as soon as you stomp on the foot switch here, that's when the fun begins. Okay, it was too noisy over there, but now it is time to demo all of the effects. And they each pay homage to some kind of classic audio effect, so if you have any music production experience, they should sound very, very familiar to you. We're gonna start with the mouse effects, and first up is reverb. In the audio world, reverb is like when you make a sound in a big room and it takes a while for the sound to fully die out. So it might sound like this. The mouse reverb basically gives your cursor a little or a lot of momentum, so when you physically stop moving your hand, the cursor will take a while to slow to a halt. This is normal cursor movement, and then I turn the reverb on, and I immediately get a little bit of a tail here. And as I turn the knob up, you see, I start skating around like crazy to the point where I barely have to touch. Whee! Next up is the mouse looper. This is one of my favorites. Um, if you've ever seen a guitarist play a part, hit a button with their feet, and then play something new as the original part keeps playing behind them in the background, that's a looper pedal. I think Ed Sheeran uses one of these all the time. The mouse looper is kind of similar. So you'll record a gesture with your hand, and as soon as you let go, the cursor will just keep replaying that motion over and over again until you either turn the effect off or record something new. When I turn the looper on, you can see my mouse actually goes away, but when I hold the right button, it starts recording, and when I let go, it starts playing it back. And so I can actually control the speed of playback. I can turn it all the way up, going forward, and I can actually reverse it if I turn the knob the other way. So that's slowly reversed. And then I can turn it way, way down, I guess. The next mouse effect is kind of a two-in-one. I've been calling it a distortion slash noise filter. So in the audio world, distortion might add a bunch of harmonic content to your sound and make it sound all noisy and aggressive like this. Ah. The mouse distortion adds noise to your movement, if that makes sense. I'm gonna turn the noise up slowly as I move back and forth, and you're gonna see a whole bunch of crunchiness. And it's still moving in the general direction I'm moving my hand, but yeah, you can see it's adding a lot of extra stuff. Now, if you turn the knob the other way, this effect is actually filtering out the noise from your hand motion. So it's effectively smoothing your cursor. You can see everything kind of slows down. You get this nice smooth glide, and if I move quickly back and forth and cancel out my motions, the mouse kind of ignores the, the fast stuff. The last mouse effect is really more of a utility. I'm calling it crossover, even though it has nothing to do with an audio crossover. It's very simple, it just lets you use your mouse as a keyboard. When I turn the crossover on, I can use the scroll wheel to choose a character to type, and then I hit the right mouse button to move to the next character. The knob controls how quickly the scroll wheel works, uh, so you can have it move really fast or, you know, require lots of scrolling if you, if you need that. And then there's other bonus stuff, like if I hold the left mouse button and drag down, that's like hitting enter. If I hold the left button and drag left, that's backspace. And if I hold the left button and drag right, that's spaces. 
And now it's time for the keyboard effects, with the first being tremolo. In the audio world, tremolo is an effect that modulates a sound's volume up and down over time. So it might sound like this. The keyboard tremolo modulates between uppercase and lowercase over time, which I figure is kind of like a proxy for volume of typing, right? So when this light is on, it will make my key presses uppercase, and when it's off, they'll be lowercase. So you can see if I hit the same key over and over again, it's changing it in real time, and I can change the speed at which that happens. And then as two Easter eggs, if you turn this all the way up, it becomes a caps lock. So if you hold it, it'll stay uppercase, and when you let go, it will go off. I guess it's more of a shift key. Um, and then the other Easter egg is, if you turn it all the way down, it will use that random case or a sarcastic case, passive aggressive case, whatever you wanna call it. Everyone's doing it, it's a meme. Uh, it just basically randomizes upper and lower case every key press. The next keyboard effect is delay, also known as echo. Echo, 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 echo. echo. The keyboard delay will repeat your keystrokes for you. So you type something once and the pedal will just keep typing it for you. Now I have delay on and I have it with infinite repeats. So if I hit a key, it will just keep typing it forever and ever. And I can add keys. And if I want to adjust the speed, I can make it faster. So that should type it in faster. And if I want to change the number of repeats, say I only want one repeat, this will just repeat the key once. And so across the knob, there are different combinations of speed and number of repeats, but it's honestly the most fun when you just keep it on infinite and just let it ride. Next up is pitch shift slash harmonizer. In audio, a pitch shifter would play your sound back at a higher frequency. Higher frequency. Or a lower frequency. Lower frequency. And a harmonizer would layer those other frequencies in with your original signal. For the keyboard effect, I was thinking of pitch as which key you're pressing, since that's how it would relate to a piano keyboard, I guess. So when this effect is engaged, when you hit one key, a different key comes out on the computer. To demonstrate pitch shift, I'm just gonna keep hitting the A key and I'm gonna twist the knob and you'll see that the key that gets printed on the screen will be getting further and further away from A. So I'll do this, twist it a little bit and we're moving up the alphabet. We should see some numbers. And now we're into harmonizer territory. So I'm hitting A and it's printing A and something some distance away from A, so A, E right now. And then it should be B, F, because that's the same distance. And I'll just twist it all the way into three-part harmony mode, where now we're printing three keys for every one that we type. And, oh, that one picks up a backspace, I think. So it actually, or no, it's an enter key. And yeah, once you get up into the numbers, you'll get some of the weird, like, white space keys, and it starts to get really funky. So there's one more keyboard effect I forgot to mention while filming outside, and it's just the mirror of the mouse crossover effect. So you can use your keyboard as a mouse. And so as I use the arrow keys, you can see it's moving up and down, it's moving all around. And if I turn up the knob, it changes the speed at which the cursor moves, which is handy if you want to get around faster or slow. And if you're wondering what I did with all of the other keys on the keyboard, um, the enter key is click. The modifier keys still work as normal keyboard keys, so you can right click by using control. And everything else just sends the cursor flying in a completely random direction. So uh, yeah, it's not particularly useful, but I thought it would be fun. Um, and if you hit the same key twice, it'll go in the same direction, <laughs> but yeah, they're, they're all just randomized. If it's not obvious at this point, this product is meant to be experimental. So don't get me wrong, it's very real. It does everything that I'm showing you, but I just don't think there's a large market of people out there looking for a way to play air hockey with their mouse cursor. 
However, I think there are some practical use cases buried in here waiting to be uncovered. I showed you, you can use it as a simple shift key or caps lock button. And I have to imagine there are other simple tasks like that, that someone may want to offload from their hands to their feet. I don't know, you might be able to use the looper as a mouse jiggler if your employer is terrible and tracks your activity. And actually, if you are familiar with Arduino, CircuitPython, MicroPython, whatever, you can reprogram this to do whatever you want. I actually will provide an alternative firmware build that lets you use this as a MIDI controller. So you can use it to control your digital audio workstation or even something like OBS for streaming. Check out the full usage instructions on GitHub for more info about that. And if you can think of any use cases for this pedal where it might actually help you or someone you know, let me know, I'd love to hear from you. But for now, I will send you off with some footage of me disassembling one of the pedals so you can get a better sense of how I actually put them together. And yeah, all the technical details will be linked below. And I think that's it. I really appreciate you sticking around. Thanks.